I only have two memories from daycare. One was my favorite place at the water table, playing God and creating goldfish breath windstorms for the ever so vulnerable toy boats. And the other was my father warning me to hold his hand as we traversed the steep hill rain flooded driveway with the precision needed to cross a frozen ocean. In preschool, I remember playing house and always being the dog and burning holes in my pants from sliding on my knees and pretending to lick the floor and believing in the loyalty of a man's best friend. In kindergarten, I remember screaming from the bathroom, assuming eternal death as the fire alarm began to roar and destroy my fragile ears with screams and wails and panic echoing and booming from the cement walls too small to open the door, a young girl forever scarred and forgotten for only a few minutes of what seemed like forever. In first grade, I don't remember much more than running from boys at recess and sitting in my room next to the tape recorder pretending to DJ for an imaginary radio station. In second grade, I remember seeing a progression of unfortunate acts as I watched a girl staple her finger, had my first tooth pulled without enough Novocaine, and got punched in the face by a boy, but the satisfaction on my face as he apologized in front of my whole class was a feeling of pricelessness. In third grade, we grew butterflies from caterpillars, which we taped to our desks soon after, sending innocent victims flying as we searched for a pencil, but the survivors were beautiful. In fourth grade, I switched schools and dove into a routine of Gap sweatpants and matching sweatshirts with Skechers naive and empty of opinions. I wrote my first story about a mother burned to death, the fault falling to the daughter. In fifth grade, I grew the horrible trait of shame as I donated my long, thick hair to a cancer foundation and donated my pride to the cruel mouths of 11-year-olds insisting that I was a boy and today my hair is paper, thin and dead. In sixth grade, I switched schools again, only to drown in a sea of products in skinny denim jeans, binding 12-year-olds under the budding glimpses of mascara and lip gloss. I was scared. In seventh grade, the lip gloss continued and I rounded into a free shape, not caring that I wasn't the skinniest and the zits on my face weren't hidden next to my clothes dipped in rhinestones and sequins and my face would beg to differ, but God, I was beautiful. In eighth grade, I stopped. I shrunk. I got a second set of braces. In 8th grade, I cried, I cared, and I fell short of what I wanted to be. In 8th grade, I ran headfirst into a wall of what I was not, am not, and will not ever be. In 10th grade, my life turned into a downhill spiral starting December 18th. On December 18th, I lost my friend and gained the very thing that would permanently damage my confidence and cause me to shake every time I tell my story. On December 20th, they told me to ignore her. In January, she pushed me, hurled names at me, words that sliced me into pieces to serve to the world. In February, she pushed me again and told me to kill myself while she spoon-fed them lies about horrors created from an imagination home to hurt and helplessness. In March, we found her blog preaching to a congregation of followers who think of me as no better than the lowest scum on earth, haunting her and threatening her life. In April, I went to the police as the school called my case of bullying childish play among high school girls, two best friends in a fight, death threats, and all. In May, I went to court for a harassment order, but I lost, and all I could think of was that my belt wouldn't stay up around my waist. I was getting bigger. That day marks one of the darkest days of my life, next to sitting in the car, driving home, learning that I would move and switch schools again. In June, she called the police, accusing me of intimidating her by standing down the hallway, leaving that as my last reputation at the school. In 11th grade, I held my heart together with scotch tape to keep myself from screaming every time I said I loved my new school and classes were great. I fell apart and I drowned again in sorrows that I could only share with myself and isolation was my pillow because yes, my grades suffered and no, I didn't make varsity and no, of course I had no friends, but yes, I held myself together because when I came home and fell on the stairs, I'd stay down on the floor. It's more comfortable there. And I still find it more comfortable on the floor because the floor will always catch you when you fall and yeah, the vertigo may keep you down but it's the soft carpet on my face that will soak up my tears when they fall hold my feet flat so I can balance on my own Blink at the right moments for the tears to run to the edge of your lashes before they fall and blink at the right moments because we built this world from the comfortable ground up and we don't want to miss it Please don't miss it and if your eyes close at the right beat, please don't miss me because I am incredible. I am unbelievable. I am impossible. I am redeemable, unbeatable, unbreakable, unreachable, untouchable, invincible. I am invisible. <laughs>